Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tonight we're gonna to be talking about the full moon that is happening in the sign of Pisces, which is gonna be happening on the 13th, Friday the 13th, and for some of you guys, the 14th, Saturday, mad early in the morning. I personally will be working, I don't know if I'll be working and creating oils on the 13th, Friday the 13th that night, or the 14th, I'm gonna follow my intuition. But pretty much what we're going to be doing in this video is we are going to be diving into the crystals that I see us working with. We're going to dive into what's going on in the planets, what you can expect astrologically and cosmically. Also, I'm gonna pull some cards as far as what we need to know intuitively to help us guide us to manifest our highest intentions, okay? So the first thing that I wanna say and that I am noticing when I'm looking at the chart is the fact that we have these planets, these personal planets, the Sun, Venus, and Mercury, and Mars in the sign of Virgo for the most part. That energy is very concentrated on Earth energy and has been. So as these planets, especially Mercury and Venus, as they exit out of Virgo, which they will, as they exit out of Virgo and move into the sign of Libra, before that, they wanna concentrate on tangible. They wanna concentrate on evidence. They want a practical approach and they also want to materialize things. They don't want energy to stay in the ethers. They really want to bring that vision, that quest that we have, that we've been feeling from this concept into an actual thing that is living breathing that we can put our hands on this is such a blessing and something that you guys should be inviting in i feel with open arms and with an open heart because you've been setting intention for quite some time for the majority of this year you have seen some things materialize and manifest themselves in a lot of ways you've been watching transformation you've been watching a lot of things break down this is because saturn the planet that rules structure and stability and our foundation has been retrograde and also pluto the planet of transformation and things that rule our obsession and our addictions is breaking down is also retrograde and breaking down these negative toxic binds and ties that have been restricting us and holding us back i think this is going to res resonate for a lot of you guys but i feel like generational curses are something that has had your full attention or your attachments and your addiction you've been watching how these addictions how these ties and these bonding chains that have been holding you energetically spiritually emotionally mentally that have been holding you back how they have blocked your blessing how they've blocked your peace and the majority of this year the universe the cosmos the divine your angels and your guides has been guiding you and helping you to release that helping you to cut yourself from that this is something that your angels and your guides did not want you to do blindly they wanted you to actually see it they wanted you to not only see it but they wanted you to understand it they wanted you to overstand it so that when you move forward you know what that pattern looks like you know what you will not do you know what it what the toxic trait looks like what it feels like so that you don't repeat that same pattern so that that energy doesn't manifest and materialize into the next and continue on as we move forward this is something that is happening globally for all of us as a collective consciousness, it's changing, it's evolving rapidly. But on a personal level, we're seeing this in our family ties. We're seeing this in how the generations, how these mindsets, how these addictions, how this curse has bled from one generation into the next and into the next and into the next. And somehow, some way, divinely, it falls in your lap now in this lifetime to cut it, to cut that cord and to release it. And so many of you guys have been doing that. So if your focus and if your priority has been on releasing that, whether it be this impoverished state of feeling guilty for receiving abundance and receiving blessings for your gifts and for your talents or maybe this feeling of lack of self-love or maybe receiving less than what it is that you deserve in your relationships or maybe this pattern of addiction or maybe these workaholic tendencies or maybe this inability to ask for help these are things that you're being guided now to see it to observe it to release it 
your attention and your intention has revolved around that but at the time of the pisces full moon this is when that energy breaks and for many of you this is about you being in a space of receiving total blessing i do feel like a good portion of those that are connected to my bahati vibe tribe or those who are watching this video who are brand new but if you are brand new i want to invite you to subscribe but i feel like a good portion of you you are connecting to this higher purpose for your life when it comes to your career Many of you are being called into positions where you are a spiritual healer or an intuitive, an empath, or the creative fields. Receiving financial abundance for your ability to think outside of the box and to create artwork and things that are a visual representation of concepts and ideas. So I'm seeing a lot of that. And this Pisces full moon is going to help you to actually materialize that. And we'll talk about that in a second. For others, I am seeing and I'm feeling that you have been cutting these cords and cutting these ties that have been blocking blessings in the love department for you. I'm seeing this connection to soulmate energy and twin flame energy, but also your life partner. I feel as though many people have been calling out for their soulmates, these partners who are going to teach them certain lessons about themselves and almost act as a mirror and we'll see that also in twin flame relationships how what is that is going on internally within you mirrors what is happening also within your partner and then linking up so that you guys can go through that journey together for the more evolved beings the beings that have lived life multiple times and wanting partnership i'm seeing you not call in those soulmates ties and those soulmate lessons and then those twin flame lessons because you've already gone through it, you've already experienced it now i'm seeing you calling in romance and love that you can enjoy and a partner that you can enjoy the rest of your life with for the sole purpose of companionship and creating a family and the pleasure that comes with that giving and receiving love and also intimacy because these readings are for a general audience the message will shift and change depending on your personal journey but these are the things that i'm seeing within the chart what i want you to do for the Pisces full moon is to connect really deeply with your emotion and also your intuition, but definitely your emotion. Now your intuition is going to guide you to ask you for what it is that you need to call out to the universe for, but your emotion, the, those strong emotional feelings that you sense and that you pick up when you think about that thing, whether it be joy, whether it be pleasure, whether it be peace or love, I want you to connect with that feeling, to connect with that emotional feeling and use that to visualize this picture of what it is that you see for yourself. Now, it's very important that we're using the power of visualization at the time of the, the Pisces full moon in order to set our intentions because Pisces connects to literally that vision that we have for ourselves, that thing that doesn't totally practically make sense because that's more in the realms of Virgo, which is the opposite of Pisces. It's more about our feeling. It's more about this idealistic. And the only reason why it's idealistic is because it's not realistic. But just because it's not realistic doesn't mean that it's not written in the stars for you and that it's not something that you shouldn't be calling in. You absolutely should be calling this in. Also, Neptune rules Pisces. Pisces is the sign that this full moon is happening in, right? Neptune and the moon meet creating this total ethereal, dreamy energy. Now, when it comes to tangible, real life, everyday events, this could be problematic. But when it comes to setting intentions, this is the key component that it is that you're going to need and to use when it comes to setting intentions and manifesting them and allowing them to come into your life. This is about using the power of visualization and your feelings and then taking those concepts, taking those feelings, taking what it is that you can envision within your imagination in your third eye and then writing them down. Another thing that I'm seeing for the full moon is the power of prophecy, but prophecy that comes through through your meditation and also your dream. Prophecy is a gift given to some by God, by the divine. It's not something that is gifted to everyone. I can't expect you to prophesy for others or yourself. So I don't think that it's realistic. Me as a Virgo, I'm all about that realistic energy, but I don't think that it's realistic for me to ask you to prophesy what it is that's going to happen within your life or even to use cards or divination 
information in order to help that to make a clear vision of what it is that you see for yourself. So if that is not your gift, or if you are someone who is gifted in foretelling the future or seeing the future and having these visions of the future, I still see this aspect and this element of using your dreams in order to prophesize, in order to have visions and feelings, in order to help guide you as, as far as other things that you want to set intention for. So that's some work that I'm seeing at the night of the full moon is setting intention by writing it down within your journal or putting that intention out into the cosmos, out into the universe before you go to bed, saying a prayer that as you're sleeping, you are going to receive visions, symbolic visions of the things that you need to know, the things that you need to hear, or signs to look out for that something is indeed going to manifest in your life. And if it isn't, then solutions to help you to manifest it or what needs to happen next to help you to manifest. I hope that that makes sense, but if you guys need a video on dream work and prophecies through your dreams, I'm more than happy to make that video for you. You're just gonna have to let me know down in the comments. Another thing that I wanna say with this full moon, and I feel like this is going to frustrate people, but hear me out before you get annoyed and before you start to give up, there is a tiny element of patience that you need to have when you are working your visualization and when you're working your intentions. This isn't to say that there's going to be a delay with the things manifesting. I don't think that it's so much a delay as much as it is a space and a time for you to continue to relax and almost allow things to flow. I've been saying that a lot this year and also the last the last year because we have had a lot of stubborn energy going on in the, in the skies and we are not free of that right now currently. We're seeing this in our government. We're also seeing this in our personal lives. But the one thing is that Saturn and Pluto are both retrograde. Now these power planets are very heavy and dense in their energy and they will block a path or they will create resistance when you are trying to actively call certain things out. So this can get kind of frustrating for spiritual workers or intuitives or even those at the very beginning of their journey, their spiritual journeys or manifesting journeys because they are actively setting these intentions but also watching these blockages that keep happening or delays that keep happening or things kind of crumbling out from underneath them. This isn't a sign of failure. This is just a sign of the times. This is the energy that is around us and we always have to be very respectful of what it is that is happening around us, what's happening in the planets because as above, so below. If it's going on up in the stars, it's definitely going to impact us down here on earth and vice versa. So it's not that your intentions aren't manifesting. We just have to be very mindful of the timing and what is happening around us. Shortly after the full moon, Saturn is going to go direct and then Pluto is going to follow right afterwards. Basically what this is, is that resistance, that gate, that guardian that's been protecting you and then also has been beating your ass is now going to lift up, it's going to open, and that's when we're going to start to see those same power planets that were that you thought were working against you, now they're working to bulldoze the rest of the way. This is Pluto and this is Saturn. Both of these planets are not only working to help to protect you, but they're also working to pave the way for the present, the future and then also the next future and the generations to come. That's how serious this energy is. Saturn is working to restructure that foundation and Pluto is working to totally transform you, people, energy, situations, like wiping it out clean and cleansing it and rebirthing it in a way that is more healthy, more sound, and more solid. The last thing I wanna talk about with this full moon is the energy of fate karma and unexpected blessings that just come pouring from the universe. But I still feel like there's this need to take a deep breath, to allow things to unfold and to not force them to fight before it's time. The first thing is there's this energy of fame and fortune, literally. I don't know if you guys are trying to visualize fame for yourself, but that is what I'm seeing within the chart. Part of this is Uranus squaring off with the part of fortune. I am seeing unexpected turn of events. I'm seeing fame that could really happen out of nowhere, kind of like striking in like a bolt of lightning. I'm also seeing monetary gains, monetary wins. I'm seeing luxury, I'm seeing solidity. I'm seeing the right person. It just feels like your luck has changed. Your fate has changed almost overnight. Now this starts at the time of the full moon. You may feel it at the time of the full moon, depending on what your chart looks like, your natal chart. But also if there is something that you feel like is utterly impossible, 
this is the full moon to call it in and to visualize it and to connect with that feeling of what it would feel like and what it would look like when you strike it big. For some of you guys, it really is truly connecting with this fated encounter, this soulmate, this twin flame, or this life partner. For others of you, it's rocketing to fame and fortune overnight, being discovered by someone, crossing paths with someone famous who signs you on the on the on the dot. That's some things that it is that I'm seeing here, but I really want you guys to take it seriously. It seems like it can't be done. It always does until it happens. If there's one sign and there's one planet that can make that dream a reality, it's Pisces and it's Neptune working together. The other magical thing about this is that Pisces is co-ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter, at the time of the full moon, sits directly on top of the vertex point. The vertex point is the, the position within the, the cosmos that creates faded encounters and faded circumstances. You are going to be at the right place at the right time and it's going to connect you to the right people, the right things, that one thing that seemed impossible. If it doesn't feel like it can happen, call it out to the universe and give it the chance, the space to manifest without you having to force and fight it and to solidify this even further as if you needed any more confirmation, as if you needed any more clarity, as if I didn't give it to you good already. We have the North Node and this is where it is that we're fated to go. This is where we are destined to go, which can challenge us in so many ways. Pluto and Saturn, those same power planets I was talking about before, are sitting almost directly opposite of the North Node. And as soon as they go direct, I'm seeing those gates swing open and the situation changing for the better. So that is what I'm seeing astrologically and now I feel like it's time for us to dive into the cards. So I'm going to grab my cards, I'm going to grab my grimoire which is right behind me and then we're going to start talking about herbs, crystals, and the messages that the cards have for us intuitively. All right, so I have my protection candle right here that I'll be working with. I'm also going to be sharing, which I never do, but I really felt called to do this. I'm also going to be sharing my Isis Tarot deck with you guys. I'm going to be working with the Lenormand. I'm going to be working with the Wisdom of the House of Night Oracle Cards by Colette Baron reed We are going to be working with the Enchanted Map, the Wild Offering Oracle, the Zombie Tarot, and the Romance Angels deck. Now I know that's a lot, but oh shoot, and how can I forget the Sea Melodies cards, which all of these things to me, all of these card decks, really connect to Neptune energy. So that's what it is I wanted to do. And I want to invite you to stay tuned to the end of the video because I will be grabbing my grimoire behind me and I will be sharing with you herbs that you can use and crystals that you can use in order to help manifest your intentions, okay? Of course, I'll keep all those links down below, but for right now, let's see what the angels and our guides have for us and that they want to let us know and they want us to hear for the time of oops, the Pisces full moon. All right. You know what? First I want to do, I want to work with the zombie tarot and I want to ask what it is that we are releasing. What is that we're letting go of? Normally I don't shuffle on camera, but tonight I definitely feel called to do that. Oh, wow. All right. So the cards that just came out, number one, there's a few that jumped out. We have the death card. I was just asking about what is that that, that we're releasing. Why am I saying the word release and let go? Because again, these karmic bonds, these karmic ties, these things that have had their hold on us for so long are things that I'm seeing within the astrology chart. But also the full moon is all about releasing and things coming to a head. And with that, I'm seeing the death card, the 10 of wands, the seven of cups, and I'm also seeing the Ten of Swords, the Five of Cups, and the Nine of Wands. Now, I'll show them to you in just a second, but when I'm seeing this energy, the Death, the Ten of Wands, the Seven of Cups, this is an ending of that burden. This is an ending of that weight. This is an ending of stress and tension and conflict and those things that have been weighing on your chest. The things that have been so heavy, but you don't even realize that it is that you've been carrying them for so long. They've just become a part of your reality. And I'm seeing with the Seven of Cups, what is ending is I that that feeling of I don't know what to do, my head is in the clouds, I feel lost, I feel confused, I feel like there's too many options or not enough options or the options in front of me, maybe they serve me, I feel like I'm not being guided. 
I feel like with this full moon, with the Pisces full moon, this is getting, grounding yourself in a lot of ways because with the personal planets, the Sun, Venus, Mercury, Mars, sitting in the sign of Virgo, we are grounding ourselves, we are solidifying ourselves and the things that we truly want for ourselves. So instead of, instead of us being overwhelmed by the options, instead of us being overwhelmed by our senses, our intuition, the thing, the veil that is in front of us, we start to see it with more clarity and start to clear that out, start to clear that chaos out and start to step into our personal power. The next thing, next thing that I'm seeing that we're releasing is the Ten of Swords, the Five of Cups, and also the Nine of Wands. For so many of us, we have been so guarded. We have been overly guarded. And this is because we have experienced so much intellectual ending, emotional ending, spiritually ending. We've seen, we've been releasing these bonds, cutting these cords, not because we wanted to, but because we are guided to, because we're learning how to protect ourselves and to protect the people that are around us and to protect the things that are most important to us. But all of that carries a weight, it carries a burden, like we're seeing with the Ten of Wands. That energy, each one of those wands carries an energy that you're using to protect yourself and to defend yourself, but also the burden that comes with that it can be really heavy on your spirit. And I think that this is why the Five of Cups card is here. I mean, look at her, she's sitting in the graveyard and she's crying and mourning over the things that is that she's lost. Yes, she has these blessings, but we cannot ignore the fact that she has these blessings, but she's experienced a lot of loss, almost more loss than she has gains. So these are the things that we're releasing. These are the things that we're letting go. And this is that end of that. It's almost like we've hit rock bottom. And from rock bottom, we are opening up to what is to come. So that's what it is I wanna ask. I wanna ask the cards, I wanna ask our guides, what is it that we truly are manifesting right now? Oh, okay, wow. Oh my God, these cards keep jumping out. What is it that we need to be manifesting? What do we need to be calling out? Okay, wow. Okay, so what just came through is the Eight of Wands, which is communication. But even as I, I'm holding this up, I feel like this is respite. I feel like this is someone who comes in and, and saves you or someone that comes in or something that comes in and changes your mind for the better. This is waiting for the sign on the horizon, for the sun to come up on the horizon, like a messenger that comes up on the horizon that gives you proof that things truly are going to change for the better. This is that sign on the radio if you've been sitting in the dark for so long and kind of like the zombie apocalypse, which makes a lot of sense because I'm working with the zombie tarot right now. But when you're sitting in the zombie apocalypse and you've been calling out into the radio system and all you're getting is static, out of nowhere, out of the blue, you hear someone say, hey, is anyone out there? Or, hey, this is so-and-so on the highway just trying to connect and you're like, oh my God, there's someone out there. There is life on the horizon. There is something that is out there other than me that it, it kind of breaks, it breaks the monotony. It breaks the silence. It breaks the darkness. So that's what I'm seeing with this, the Eight of Wands is, what is it that we're manifesting? We're manifesting signs that there truly is something on the horizon for us. To confirm that even more, the two of wands is here. The two of wands is that energy of what is it that I do? What is it, do I stay, do I go? Do I do this option, do I do this option? But the reality is is that there are options and in order to even feel like there are options, there has to be life brought to you. There has to be this vision, this quest that it is that you want to go on in order for you even to consider the two options. So that's what I'm seeing here. But at the same time, in the meantime, I'm still seeing this Four of Swords energy, which is a need for rest and relaxation. For some of you guys, you're actually calling out for people to help you so that you're not doing everything all alone. This is that connection to, again, partnership. You don't realize how... I think you do realize, as I'm saying this, it's not that you don't realize how important and valuable partnership is, but it almost feels as though you're losing hope in feeling like there's someone else who wants the same things as you do and is just as serious as you are because what you've experienced up until this point is a lot of people who don't take you seriously, who don't value themselves, number one, and don't value you and your relationship. So how could you build a future and how can you build longevity with someone who doesn't want the same things and who does, who isn't committed and devoted, who doesn't have the same commitment as you? 
who doesn't have the same dedication as you. So I'm really, I'm actually seeing the disappointment that comes from a person who has been calling out and trying to manifest these things and trying to see them, you know, signs that someone is just as equally committed as you that you feel like you're going to give up but you start to hear and you start to see signs at the time of the full moon, that's something that I see you guys needing to manifest, is not only are you manifesting this actual person, this actual circumstance, this opportunity, this thing, but you should also be asking for clarity that you are not the only one out there, that there is someone who wants the same thing as you, there is someone who can help you, that you can bounce ideas off, that you can share your life with, that you can build a brand with, that you connect with this group, this tribe, this community. There's signs that this is going to happen for you, that this is truly going to manifest. And in the meantime, it's gonna make life a little easier. I still feel like I was feeling before, especially with the Knight of um, Pentacles in this deck, it's the Knight of Hazards. I still feel like there's some timing that needs to happen with this, some quietness, some stability that needs to happen, This you know, it's not that you need to do anything, just allow the universe, especially with Saturn and Pluto, give them time to turn direct first before you make those solid concrete commitments to anyone and anything. That's when you're gonna start seeing momentum, but in the meantime, don't neglect your vision because you calling this out at the time of the Pisces full moon is so important to you knowing and planning and visualizing what is to come. And I really see how important it is for you to intuitively see it and for you to emotionally feel it and intuitively feel it, okay? So that is what I'm seeing with that already. Wow. Let me go ahead and move over to my Isis cards and see what other additional messages we need to hear to help us with manifestation and setting our intentions. What is it that we need to be focusing on? What are we being called to by the universe to set intentions for? What blessings are out there for us? Wow. King of Pentacles just jumped out. The chariot, wow. This is crazy for me right now. What else do we have? Oh my gosh, Four of Pentacles. Okay, I wanna focus on the Four of Pentacles really quickly. What messages in addition do you have with this? Yep. Yep. Oh my gosh. This is too... I'm like, I feel called to pull these cards out. And I feel called to pull these out. Yes. Okay. So, King of Pentacles and the Chariot. Again, this is people who are just as serious, who are just as focused, who are just as dedicated as you are when it comes to moving forward with your intention, when it comes to moving forward with your plans. The Chariot, yeah, it does connect to travel, it does connect to long distance, and it does connect to movement, so you're going to start seeing that movement because that naturally comes with this card, but more than that, it's about intention. It's about your will and your intention matching the will of God, matching the energy of the cosmos, Cosmos, at matching the energy of just energy around with other people moving in the same lichen state as you. So all of those things working together helps to create actual progress and helps that intention to actually manifest not only is it going to manifest, but it is going to live on. It is going to be prosperous. It is going to be generous. It's going to be solid with the energy of the King of Pentacles coming in and investing his coin, investing his energy, investing his attention and his intention into matching your will, the things that you want and see for yourselves. This is business. This is career. This is the home life. This is romance. This is travel. This is your education. It goes on and on, your health. This is helping people, people helping people. All of those things are coming to manifest depending on what it is that you feel called when it comes to setting your own intentions. In the meantime, the Four of Pentacles jumped out. The Four of Pentacles is about using what you have now and all that you have now, holding on to that and maybe not investing it all right away, but setting intention and grounding yourself and rooting yourself in that as things manifest and as energy starts to pick up around you. Then I asked for a little additional clarity and confirmation when it comes to working with the Four of Pentacles and we have the Moon card. Now as I'm seeing that, as I'm seeing this card, I feel like this connects to the energy of the full moon and the energy of Neptune, which has those elements of deception a little bit, of idealistic traits, of things not being what is that they appear, but you also connecting with your intuition to be guided. 
through the darkness. And I'm also seeing this new journey with the full card that's, that jumped out and also the page of pentacles which jumped out that is also saying, like I've been saying, this is slow and steady. This is one step at a time. This is pacing yourself and being very smart and being very mindful, especially with the Queen of Swords who showed up last, who is saying, use your energy of discernment. And by when we, when we talk about discernment, this just this means that we are allowing people and things to prove themselves first first before we just willy-nilly invest ourselves in them. We want them to prove themselves. We want them to show up for us, for pentacles, before we just give our money, before we give our energy, before we give our investment and our trust into something that hasn't proven itself yet, okay? And that is as a direct result of the lessons that you've learned in the recent past. Now, the next cards that I want to work with are from the Enchanted Map, which is currently upside down by Colette Baron reed And this deck I love because it connects us to understanding uh, where we are currently in our life, what the energy looks like in our life. So the first card that just jumped out is the card of Rock Bottom. Now, this makes a lot of sense. And I don't want you guys to panic, but we just saw the Ten of Swords and we just saw the Ten of Wands. Basically what we're seeing with that, with the Ten of Swords, the Ten of Wands, and the card of Rock Bottom, is that we have literally hit Rock Bottom. We have, you know, done all that we can, we've learned all that we can, and from here, this is when we start to see the light at the end of the tunnel, which is what I've been saying before. What is it that we are manifesting? Wow, strength. Strength. It seems like it's the end. It seems like, you know, I don't want to say that the worst, I mean, no, the worst has happened. It seems like how would we be able to pull ourselves up? But as I'm even looking at this, it reminds me of the globe. It reminds me of our planet, which has gone through so much. I feel like our planet is almost at rock bottom now, but the planet and our earth and energy has a way of growing despite the barren circumstances, despite having hit rock bottom. Plants always break through concrete just because that's what they do. Naturally, that's what they do. And that's what I'm seeing for you. It may seem like that was the end. It may seem like everything is dead and done, but it's not. It opens up the door. It opens up the energy to movement, to manifestation, to setting intention. When you hit rock bottom, this is not a point for you to lose faith. This is just a a point for you to have your faith actually solidified in what can actually happen for you. Yeah, when you're at rock bottom, this is when you're protecting yourself. This is when you're seeing what is most important and what is most valuable to you. It's a feeling and a sense of security. It's a feeling of these relationships are everything to me. This is a thing of money isn't everything. It does, it is important. It does serve its purpose, but I want more for my life. And also I am a precious, divinely protected piece of treasure that God is looking out for, the divine is looking out for, the universe is looking out for. All of these things that have brought me to rock bottom have been in order to protect me. It may not seem that way because logically, in our minds, it it doesn't make sense, but everything serves a purpose and everything is there to teach you how strong you are, how flexible you are, and what it is that you're going to manifest. Now, what is it that we are manifesting? What is the path ahead of us? Where is it that we are going? Oh my gosh, you guys, movement. I'm done. (laughs) Reading over. Literally movement with the chariot. We're just seeing things finally moving. We're finally going to see some progress We're finally going to see manifestation. Okay. Now I want to talk about okay I'm just like what cards do I want to work with next? I don't even know I I feel like I want to keep shuffling from this deck, but I almost feel like that's almost like a lush I almost feel like that's a lot Okay, what I want to work with the letterman. I want the letterman to tell us exactly what it is that we're manifesting. Now I'm excited. Where are we seeing movement towards? Wait, before I go any further, let me show you. Oh, please. I hope I didn't put that card away. Damn it. Okay. Just trust me. The movement card has this ostrich, but also the earth on its back. And the strength card was also the earth almost balancing on her back. And I'm, that to me just connects to earth energy and growth regardless. And I'm also seeing this water, this rain, this light rain that's coming in. And it, you know, she's protected as the rain is coming, but that rain is also nourishing the earth and providing growth. And I love that. 
So what is it that is truly growing here? What are we manifesting? At the time of the full moon, this is um, the cards that I'm shuffling and working with right now are the Gilded Lenormand. Okay, that card wanted to jump out before. This card wanted to jump out. What is manifesting here? Where are we seeing movement? Movement, movement towards what? Wow, a lot of what? Oh, yes. Oh my God, I'm here for this. I'm here for this 1,000%. You guys are like, what? Just tell me. Okay, so the cards that jumped out are the lily. That was the first thing. We're seeing the birds, so a little bit of chatter, a little bit of conversation, but we're also seeing the moon card. Again, that ethereal energy that's connected to romance, fame, and these visions that don't even make sense. Like, they, they don't even logically make sense. They're not practical, but again, we're not working with the practical realms outside of you taking care of the tangible things that are in your energy field and in your space your responsibility is now but outside of that you are also taking care of your vision you're also allowing yourself to connect with this dream that you have for yourself the other thing is that when we have these two cards the the clover and the moon card we have fame and that shows me what it was that i was seeing before um, in the astrology chart, which is I feel like some of you guys are really going to be famous. I know that sounds wild So remember me when you get to the top <laughs> But some of you guys are truly famous or some of you guys are connecting with celebrities or connecting to your YouTube channel Growing and expanding in some way. I don't I don't know or maybe you're being a public figure or maybe you're known for your artwork, you're known for your creativity, or maybe you're connecting with the right people. This is something that is drawn to you. It's something that people are attracted to. Um, with the snake card, the snake card seems like it's a negative thing, but it's not always a negative thing. It's just, it's like being seduced by something. It's something that entices you and brings you in and draws you into it. And with these cards surrounding it, I just, I, I love this energy. This is what is that we're manifesting, fame, romance, this vision that we have for ourselves that seems so impossible, it feels like a stroke of luck, but it's something that we've been desiring for so long. That's what the snake is, it's the card of desire. The only thing that I think is a little problematic is the birds card because sometimes this is about what people are saying, but this doesn't have to be a negative thing because this is using social media for your advantage, working with your tr tribe, connecting with others. And then I was like, okay, well, what is it that we're actually manifesting? The first card that jumped out was the fish card. This is the card of abundance. And then I was like, an abundance of what? An abundance of joy, fame, exposure, light, sunlight, health, vitality. And I wanted to confirm this even further and we got a tree and that is even more solid, firm foundations. And I also feel like this is where it is that you belong ultimately and I just find that so beautiful so beautiful so let's work with the wild offering in order to help support that and cement this a little further what does the divine want to tell us what does what messages do the divine have for us for this full moon wow so true love jumped out contentment and I feel like we need to pull a third card okay I'm just gonna pull out all of these Oh wow, oh wow. Okay, so true love was the first card to jump out. I don't know if you guys can see that. The next one is contentment. This is that feeling, that nine of cups feeling, which is all that you have currently with you is enough and it just fills your cup up 1000%. This is that I can rest and I can be still and I can enjoy the fruits of my labor. I can enjoy myself. I can enjoy my relationship. I can enjoy my career. I can enjoy all that I've accumulated. And I can also enjoy my quiet time because I know that things are manifesting and because I know that they are mine. That is it. And I'm content with that. I am happy with that. I am fully blessed within that. The other cards that jumped out are intention, of course. This is about setting intention for those things that are going to help you to feel that way. And then also, as if I didn't say this before, we see the card of health. That's what jumped out. We're also seeing enjoyment. This is a you being in a space where you're actually able to enjoy your life, that it's not you struggling and forcing and doing things all by yourself and wondering when something is going to happen, if it will ever happen, of course it's going to happen, when you set intention. And, that, oh wow, 
wow this card I just looked at it it says you can learn to rest in what you already have and already are suddenly you remember I'm right here resting in and with God and this connects me to that card of protecting treasure this is the universe the divine the cards your guides your in your those who are showing the way for you those that are trying to pave the way trying to remind you and trying to tell you that while you are resting while you are feeling like you're at rock bottom it's not rock bottom it's a chance for you to be quiet and to be still so that you can see what is most important to you set intention for that so that as you move forward into the future you have a greater sense of contentment and a greater sense of joy and a greater sense of gratitude for the things that the universe is really truly about to bless you with and then we have your health and then we have the card of self-love i feel like these are some things that are making themselves known and aware to you is how important it is for you to take care of your physical. This is literally your physical body, but also this physical environment around you now, the health of that and the health of your mind, how important that is. And also, when you hit rock bottom, it shows you clearly the lesson shows you how much you truly do deserve. That is the universe trying to protect you. It seems like you hit rock bottom, but really it's the universe removing out and canceling out these things, these things that you almost have settled on, that you just accepted as your reality, and it's telling you that you actually deserve more and to ask for more to set intention for what it is that you want for yourself so that you can truly enjoy the magic and the mystery of this life and the blessing of this life. That's, that's magical all by itself. Now the next card that I want to work with are the Sea Melodies cards. This is the Mermaids cards. This is what they look like, for those of you guys that are wondering. What do they want us to know? Wow. Oh my gosh. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving. Goodbye. <laughs> Jess has left the chat. No, I haven't. I am fully 1000% invested in this and I receive it. I receive it. I'm receiving this, okay? So the cards that came through is the card of meditate and also wild. Now meditate, again, connect now before you're like, just why are you so excited about that? Give me a minute, give me a second to continue on. But the card meditate connects me back to that energy of protecting treasure, the four of swords. Was it the four of swords? Yeah, it was the four of swords, the four of wands, and also the cards of rock bottom, ten of swords, ten of ten of wands, which was really telling you to kind of be still, to be quiet, and just allow the dust to kind of settle and to connect with your feelings, connect with that vision, meditate on this picture, use that in order to visualize your next intention. And then I saw the card wild. Now, something about seeing the card wild made me want to pull some more cards, and that's when things get juicy. But before that, I want to read this to you. Believe in your otherworldly beauty, dance with the waves, and drink in that sunshine, right? So that sunshine connects to the sun card that is that we just pulled, which is all about that fame, that vitality, that health, that happiness, that joy, that abundance, that blessing, okay? And then we have believe in your otherworldly beauty, which reminds me of self-care, you believing in this otherworldly vision that it is that you have for yourself that doesn't even logically make sense. It is so wild. It is so unconceivable. But that is the energy of Pisces full moon in a nutshell. If we could summarize it in one word, it is just wild, like wild, reckless faith, right? So then I'm like, well, speak to me more about the wild card. And then that's when we hear communicate. So that's when we're seeing those the eight of wands and the twitter the the birds then we see voyage which connects again to travel and finally movement and then also opportunity that card also jumped out opportunity you will prove yourself and discover if you brave the rough seas voyage set sail on a new course communicate things left unsaid will never reach the shore so i think that it's what you are saying what you will hear that will start this movement that will start this momentum when it comes to starting this new journey this new phase within your life it seems so wild it always does until it manifests until it happens now okay wait i want to pull from the romance cards for those of you guys that are concerned with romance and concerned with love because the true love card did jump out and i did say that i would work with the romance angel deck because neptune and pisces is so connected with romance and visions and fantasy in that way okay 
What is it that we are manifesting? So that's what we need to hear. What is it that we are manifesting? Oh my, I knew it was gonna jump out. I knew it was. <laughs> I knew it was gonna happen. Okay, so first, <laughs> my apologies for your earbuds. Okay, so this is not what we're manifesting. This is what we needed to hear. So this card is the card of separation. It says time apart from your partner is on the horizon. So what I'm seeing with this is that you, there obviously might have been a separation in this life, but I'm also seeing a separation from you and your soulmate or you and that divine connection, that d divine true love that happened in the lifetimes. And I had this vision the other day when I was in my meditation, I literally heard this. The message was that there are people, there is a person if you believe in reincarnation, because this is what came through through the meditation, because I've been working a lot with Egypt, Egyptian magic lately. I don't know if you can tell, but that's something that I've been working on lately. Um, because it came through as while I was working on generational curses, but that's another story. It's another video. But um, if you believe in reincarnation, there are people and souls that have literally chosen to come in this life just so that they can meet you and spend their life, their entire life by your side. And that's what is that I'm seeing with separation. I see this and I'm feeling this not only in physical separation that has happened in this life, but there has been separation in your entire life from past lives, right? In the meantime, we're having this energy of let go of control issues, trying to bring the two of you guys together, trying to manifest and draw that person in, trying to draw them into your life. They will come. In the meantime, you are working on forgiving and learning from these past examples. This is not exclusively just romantic relationships. This is also connections that you've had with your family. Um, relationships that you've had with people in your life, maybe connections with your classmates, maybe they, maybe you were bullied, maybe there's um, things that you've learned internally from your environment that has you having a wonky relationship with yourself, which you can't trust or you have control issues within yourself, perfectionism, those types of things, or maybe you have issues of abandonment, so you try to control, you try to manipulate, or maybe you have issues of um, controlling what it is that you say yes to so that when someone magical does come into your life because you're so focused on manifesting perfection within your partner that you don't allow yourself to receive that true love and you just reject it because you're so concerned with getting it right the first time that those are some things that you guys need to let go of that you need to forgive yourself for rejecting certain people rejecting certain things or you being rejected and learn from that through this separation right so then i needed to ask because i was looking at those cards okay that's the message that we need to hear all right well what is it that we are manifesting well we are manifesting currently a space that is actually safe for you to love. This is when that green light flashes up and says, now is the time. It is safe for you to love. Literally in that, that means now. It's not, it is going to be safe for you to love or. Sorry about that guys. So my camera cut off and I had to switch over to my phone. So I'm filming on my phone right now because my memory is filled, but we are going to move forward because can't stop, won't stop. We have the chariot here. We have the movement card. We have the voyage, the opportunity. So you think that I'm gonna allow that to stop me? No, not today, Satan, not today. So, okay, the card that we next pulled is what is that we're manifesting? It is safe for you to love, okay? So this is not saying, okay, it will be safe for you to love or it was safe for you to love. It is now safe for you to love, which means that the green light is on, okay? The, the energy is go, right? And then I was like, well, what is, what is right following after that? Soulmate, literally soulmate. This is, yes, this is your soulmate. So not only do I see this and feel this for actual soulmates, but I see this for also twin flames. I'm seeing this also for your life partner. I'm seeing this also for important connections that you have been calling into your life. When? Very soon. Like truly, like now, this is what's going to be manifesting. And I'm seeing the importance of using this Pisces full moon to visualize that romance, to see how it would make you feel when these two people come together. 
and what that would feel like when you're being held by your partner, when your partner is in the same mind as you, when they are saying yes to you, when they want to spend time with you, when they want to share their life with you, when there isn't secrets, when it's open discussion, when communication just flows between the two of you, easy and effortlessly, not because you're fighting for it, but because your partner wants it. Mm, can we talk about that, right? And not only are you manifesting this person, but you're manifesting this feeling and the reality that it is now safe for you to love, that you can let go of all of those control things, of all of those burdens, that 10 of swords, that 10 of wands, that rock bottom energy, that chitter chatter, that gossip, that bad vibes, that bad juju, those karmic ties that you've been releasing. Now it is time for you and it is safe for you to love who your soulmate when very soon if not now and i think that if the card is very soon it's because saturn and pluto want to go direct and they want to bulldoze the way for you especially if you have if you're like my generation pluto falls within scorpio so it just bleeds into the things these karmic ties these bonds that have been holding us back let me know in the comments if that's you okay and then there was something else that i wanted to shuffle from Oh, okay, one last thing that I want to shuffle from, and it's from the cards Notes from the Universe on Love and Connection. Divine, what is it that you can speak to us? What words can you tell us and articulate so that we can hear? Oh, okay, wow. What do we need to hear? Okay. And then what is it that we are manifesting? Wow. Wow. What is it? What is it that we need to hear? Convince yourself, not others. This reminds me, well, there's other cards that are going to come with this, so just be patient with me, but convince yourself, not others. This is you literally convincing yourself of this vision that you have within within yourself. You don't need to share your vision. You don't need to share this picture that you have for yourself, this love that you want, this career, your purpose, it's not going to make sense to others, but it needs to make sense to you. So convince yourself that not others, that's what you need to hear. Okay. Sometimes we second guess ourselves, especially when working with Pisces energy and with the full moon in the sign of Pisces, it feels like it's always impossible until it happens. So the only person that needs to believe that it will happen is literally you. The other thing that I'm seeing is this energy of comparison. Stop comparing your path. Stop comparing your journey. Stop comparing what has happened with others and what has happened to you and feeling disappointed and neglected and abandoned because of that. No two flowers are the same, yet all are beautiful in their own way. You have your own path. Your time is now. So let go of these control issues. Let go of this, I don't know how this is going to happen. This is never going to happen to me you know, whatever is going to happen to everybody else. Everyone else deserves it. No, convince yourself, not others, of the blessing, the beauty of what it is that you are going to very soon to receive, okay? And the last thing is, why? Because love is the reason. This is what we need to hear. Love is the reason for all things. You need to love what it is that you do. You need to feel loved by the people that you are doing it for. Love is the reason. God, divine, the universe wants to give it to you. Why? Because it loves you infinitely. Why do you deserve it? Because you are living, breathing love. Love is the reason. Each person in your life is there for a reason, and that reason always has something to do with love, like me, the universe. So the universe operates on this frequency of love. Love is the highest, highest vibration. What is it that we're manifesting? Let's talk about it. So there are a few cards that jumped out, and the first was forgive. Literally, that was the first card that jumped out. What is it that we're manifesting? We're manifesting forgiveness. This is that energy of, I have learned, I have learned how to forgive after I hit that rock bottom. I've learned my lessons and I let it go, right? Your anger is justified. There's a reason why you felt scorned. There's a reason why you hit rock bottom. There's a reason why it felt like such a burden to you. There's a reason why it's been so heavy on your chest. But as you go through that and you learn those lessons, forgive yourself, forgive others for putting you through it. Forgive the universe, God, the divine, your guides, your ancestors for teaching you that lesson. Forgive yourself forgiveness, right? Love in spite of it all. No matter how crazy it seems, no matter what that path has looked like for you, still show up with an energy of love. 
then this card jumped out because it was stuck to the other one. It says, there's a deeper reason for each of your questions. Seek it. When I see this, I feel like there's a deeper reason for why you truly are asking for more for yourself. That reason is because it is there for you to receive it. That is the true reason of why it is that you're asking this. This is why you're seeking it. This is why you question it so much, so hard. You're pushing back so much because you're, there's a part of you that needs confirmation. There's a part of you that needs clarity. For some of you guys that have been pushing back and fighting something and saying no to it, it's because you see how solid it is. I do this all the time in my faith, in my with, with astrology, with tarot. With, with working with guides, with working with the divine, I'm always like, prove it to me, prove it to me. Why? Because there's something about it that is real. And I need you to show up and I need you to prove it. The harder I push back, the more there's something valid behind it. The more that sometimes I push away something, the more almost it kind of needs to come in. There's a deeper reason for each of your questions. Find it. And I feel like it's going to find you. And what is it going to do? They choose you. That's what you are manifesting. Now let me go ahead and grab my grimoire. This is my personal grimoire. All beaten up, all candle waxed, all years of it. Let me go ahead and flip through this and find out what herbs I have for us and then I have written down for us for the Pisces full moon okay the first thing that I'm seeing when it comes to the herbs is yarrow I'm seeing mugwort yerba mate yes the tea peony tea I'll be working with that myself personally I'm seeing marijuana usage of course because Pisces and visualization blah 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 myrrh and also frankincense there's an interesting connection between those two with working with frankincense and working with myrrh because you're working with earth you're working with spirituality you're working with blessings and gifts it just manifests i'm also seeing working with the ash tree if you have connections to it gardenia jasmine and skullcap the other thing that i see those are the herbs those are the herbs that is that i'm seeing i'm also seeing you working with them in oils i'm seeing you working with them in bath soaks I'm seeing you working with them in dream work, working with the moon, automatic writing, and for some of you guys, I see you guys going out into the woods and seeing the moon through the trees. There's something about that that I am seeing here. And then, let me see when it comes to crystals. Let me flip through really quickly. When it comes to crystals, I'm seeing amethyst, spirit quartz, selenite, and did I say amethyst already? Yes, I did and moonstone so those are the crystals that is that i'm seeing for us all right so i hope that that makes sense i know that this video was very extensive and very thorough as they always are but i didn't want to leave you guys hanging i wanted you to be able to feel empowered and to be able to work your magic i'm going to go ahead and close up for the night because i've been working over time let me know down in the comments how this makes you feel if this resonates if it doesn't resonate if you are going to be setting intention that time. Also, the Pisces full moon is going, Pisces full moon intention oil is going to be up for you guys in my apothecary. I will be working either that Friday night or that Saturday night. I almost feel like Saturday night is when I will be working and setting intention. I will be sharing as much as I can. There will be custom oils for those of you guys that are connecting with your vision, so I'm more than happy to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. And the links for all of those oils and the ability to work with me in that way will be available down in the description box. Also, readings will be opening in October, so you can look out for that on my Instagram for those notifications and also on my website, okay? In the meantime, I'm sending you guys all of my love. We are manifesting some incredible blessings. The one thing that I will say is just don't sell yourself short and convince yourself of these blessings because if, if you're the only person that needs convincing, then the power is in your hands. That means the world is your oyster. All right, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.